This is Surfside Beach, Texas, a small beach town on the mouth of the Brazos River. On my first trip here 10 years ago, I noticed something odd. Two beach houses perched precariously on the edge of the water, both abandoned. Who would build a house so close to, even protruding into, the gulf? And following that, what made them finally give up and leave? What I discovered was not a couple of questionable houses, but a constant and often losing battle coastal cities have been fighting against the gulf. One that has taken hundreds of structures over the years and will likely only get worse. Beach Drive is a dividing line. On the right are stilted pastel houses spanning the last 50 years or so. On the left is a riprap barrier along a narrow beach and just beyond the Gulf of Mexico. But this street wasn't always a dividing line. In fact, when it was built, Beach Drive wasn't even on the water. There was once a whole line of houses that sat between Beach Drive and the Gulf, along with a row of grassy dunes now all wiped off the map. Coastal erosion was nothing new to Texas. The state's beaches lose an average of 4.1 feet a year before interventions are accounted for. The causes behind this are many. Though the beaches have been eroding to some degree forever, the damming of rivers from the Mississippi to the Trinity has reduced the amount of sediment deposited, which had been a key factor in maintenance of beaches against erosion. The counterclockwise swirl of the Gulf delivers sediment from the outflow of rivers along the shore. Although the brown water found in northeast Texas shore waters might not be the best for visitors, it is essential to the life of the beaches. In the early 2000s, Surfside was already facing increasing exposure as the dunes and coastal grasses that once protected the town's homes was disappearing at an alarming rate. At this time, many of the beachfront homes already had their stilts and bare sand, but the precarious homes held on. Desperate homeowners and local government agencies installed sandbags, riprap, and dune fences to protect their plots. Then, in 2008, Hurricane Ike slammed the Gulf Coast. The eye of the hurricane hit less than 50 miles from here, and although the media focus rested largely on Houston and the Bolivar Peninsula, Surfside took a serious blow. Most of the beachfront houses whose natural protection had been weakened over the years completely vanished during the storm, uprooted and spread out by a near 20-foot storm surge. Even off the water where the houses withstood the storm, sand was carried in blocks from the shore. The two boarded up houses that were here were the last remnants of hundreds of homes lost during the storm. Surfside Beach lost nearly a third of its population during this decade. Beach Drive itself barely withstood the storm and without the riprap barrier would have crumbled into the waves. A legal battle predating Ike between the state, who mandates that all beaches are public land, and landowners, whose once inland plots are now jutting into the water, drug out in court for years holding the two abandoned houses hostage. The landowners, often out hundreds of thousands of dollars of building value and land that was once at a premium, called for the Texas General Land Office to rebuild the beach, an action that had been done in the past with success. Rebuilding the beach is expensive, but for places like Surfside that are nearly entirely dependent on tourist dollars, can often have big community and industry support. Today those two houses are gone, but the problem is far from over. Further up the beach, other houses sit in the same precarious predicament. The concrete sidewalk here, once at ground level, marks the devastating toll erosion has taken. Once among the most desirable real estate on the island, a vacation rental sign still hangs in this house, though the decrepit stair remnants are hardly inviting. Even among the houses that are still inhabitable and occupied by beachgoers, survival is hardly viable. Much like the houses that were washed away in 2008, the stilts here are in bare sand. One hurricane could decimate Surfside's beachfront house stock. Amidst the turmoil, there is good news. The newer homes built on the island are required to be not only stronger against wind and water, but also inland of the vital dunes that protect the shore. Many of these homes survived in 2008. An ominous blessing, the riprap intervention along Beach Drive worked, and the row of homes inland from the street, once hundreds of feet away from the shore, now enjoy waterfront views. But whether they, and even the street, will stand the test of time remains to be seen. Check out the articles in the description for a more in-depth look at the erosion problem and the complex legal battles surrounding it. As always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and come with me on the next adventure.